The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company. Hi everybody, I'm Brian Kenny, and welcome to ESPN Sports Figures, where science goes on the field. Up first, Florida Marlins rookie sensation Dan Ugla joins our Greg Abbey to take a swing at the sweet spot of the bat. in the game. If you've ever played baseball, you've probably noticed this. Sometimes when you hit, oh, oh the bat seems to vibrate like crazy in it. Whew, it really hurts your hands. And sometimes, oh, the bat seems to just twist out of your hands. Sometimes. Oh, you don't feel anything at all. And the ball goes way farther. And you can even hear the difference in the sound the bat makes. So why is that? To help us figure it out, we've got this guy here, Dan Ugla of the Florida Marlins. Dan attended the University of Memphis, where as a junior, he was named an All-American by Baseball America. Then last year with the Marlins, he broke the rookie record for most home runs by a second baseman when he belted 27. Then he was named Rookie of the Year by the Sporting News. So I think it's safe to say that Dan is a virtuoso of the bat. So Dan, can you tell when you've really connected with the ball? You can, because when you hit it too, too far off the end or too close to your hands, it hurts your hands but when you hit it just right, it feels great. What about the sound? Is that any different? Sound is definitely a lot louder. Why is that? I mean, what's, what's going on? Why is the sound better? Why does it go farther? Well, there's a spot on the bat called the sweet spot, which is right in this area right here. And it's a spot when you know you hit it good, it's gonna go a long way. You can tell from the feel and the sound. So uh, that's sort of weird, right? I mean, this, this bat's all wood, right. Right? right? So why would it be different if you hit it here or hit it down here? I don't know, but it is. Okay, guys, let's try a little experiment. Now, Lucille, I want you to hold that bat as if you were batting. Excellent. Now, hold it with just your top hand. Close your eyes, concentrate. Uh, Ross, hit the bat somewhere up near the top. How'd that feel? A lot of vibrations, and the bat almost twisted out of my hand. Okay, uh, Ross, hit it down closer to her hand this time. A lot of vibrations again, and a lot of pressure pushing into my hand. Okay, Ross, this time let's find the, try to find the sweet spot that Dan was talking about. There, I hardly felt anything. Okay, cool. So is that spot the same as the center of gravity? Well, the center of gravity is the point where the bat balances. Yeah, like if I hold this bat here, it doesn't spin one way or the other. It balances, that's the center of gravity. But. That's nowhere near the spot where she didn't feel anything. Okay, so the sweet spot is not the same spot as the center of gravity, but let's see if they're related. If we apply a force at a bat's center of gravity, the bat will move without any rotation. If we apply a force away from the center of gravity, the object will move and will also rotate like this. But even though it spins, there will be a point that remains stationary. The stick pivots around this point. See, the ball hitting the bat applies a force. If we fix one end, like when I'm holding the bat and then apply a force, to just the right spot, the stationary point where the bat pivots will be our fixed point, your hands. That's called the center of percussion. If we were to apply a force on the far side of the center of percussion, we would get a movement at our pivot point in this direction. A force on the close side gives us a movement in that direction. Now, our hands are gonna have to apply their own force to keep the bat from moving or spinning out of our hands, and that can hurt. 
But when you hit at the center of percussion, there is movement to spin the bat in this direction and a movement to spin the bat in this direction. The movements are equal and opposite and cancel each other out, so no movement. See, that's what I wanted. C.O.P., baby. Come on, bring it. OK, so it's not the center of gravity, but it, it could be that the center of percussion is the sweet spot Dan described. All right, but that only explains the twisting she was feeling. It, it doesn't explain the vibration. Right. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with the difference in sound the bat makes. There's another way the sweet spot on a bat might work. It's not much different than this guitar here. You see, when you pluck a string on a guitar, it vibrates. Well, a baseball bat vibrates too. You just can't see it. But you can feel it, right? Absolutely. When you hit the ball wrong, it vibrates so much that it really stings your hands. And you can just feel it when you hit it right. OK, but why would that be? I mean, it's going to vibrate no matter where you hit it. OK, now let's look at the vibrations. Lalo, let's hold the bat and just let it hang down from one hand. Excellent. Jimmy, with the hammer, I want you to start tapping the bat somewhere down. Start down here. What do you feel, Lalo? It's vibrating. It's vibrating. OK, mm -hmm. continue on up the bat with the hammer. Still vibrating. Wait, wait, right there. It stopped vibrating. It stopped. OK, let's mark that spot. Good, and continue with the hammer. Mm, started vibrating again. Again? Yeah. OK, that's weird. There's one spot on the bat that doesn't vibrate when you hit it. And it sounds different, too. When any material object is disturbed, vibrations travel back and forth, carrying the energy of the disturbance in the form of waves. Now, when the object is fixed, like this guitar string is fixed to the guitar, the waves of the string move back and forth in a set vibration pattern determined by things like its mass, length, and elasticity. That vibration pattern is called the frequency of the vibration. For the guitar, this frequency determines the musical note it sounds. Pressing down on the string changes the length of the string, also changes its frequency. The tension of the string also determines its frequency. If we make the guitar string really big, we can see what's going on better. So you guys, give me some tension. OK, now let's add a disturbance. The waves going back and forth on the string form a wave pattern called a vibrational mode. Two modes are formed by the three spots on the string that hardly move at all. The dead spots are caused by the waves canceling each other out as they travel back and forth. These points are called nodes. Two nodes form a mode. And a node could be what the sweet spot is all about. We can make a baseball bat big enough to see the vibrations, but we can create a simulation that allows us to look at what's happening. These simulations show the modes formed by the bending of the bat. When we lay the modes over the bat, you see right away that one mode has a node where you hit the ball and one where your right hand is. And the other mode has a node where you hit the ball and one where your left hand is. It's pretty clear that hitting the ball at this node is going to result in very little vibration at the nodes where your hands grip the bat. Oh, yeah. I felt good. I like that. The difference in vibration is also why a well-hit ball sounds so different. So there's one spot on the bat where there's no movement pulling the bat out of your hands, and there's another spot where there's no vibration, and you get this great sound. But why would either of those help you hit a home run? Because the ball has energy coming towards the bat, and the moving bat has energy too. The best hit is going to put as much of that energy into the ball as possible. So both of these explanations put more energy into the hit? If I don't make contact at the center of percussion, some of my energy has to keep the bat from shaking in my hands. OK, that makes sense. If you hit at the center of percussion, all the energy can go into the swing of the bat. And the same for hitting away from the node. The extra vibrations are using up kinetic energy that you want to go into the ball. Right, right, because there's a finite amount of energy when ball meets bat. And you want all that energy going into the ball. If the bat vibrates, then that energy is wasted. We can see what we're talking about really easily like this. Now, if we give a ball some energy, it 
See, the ball hardly came off the racket at all. All the energy was used up moving the racket. Now, if the racket didn't spin, See, we got some of the energy back. After all, energy is what hitting is all about. The more energy you put into the ball, the farther it goes. Using the law of conservation of energy and conservation of momentum, you can find yet another spot on the bat to maximize the speed of the ball. So Dan, it seems like we have three explanations for the sweet spot. The center of percussion where the bat doesn't move your hands. Right, the node of vibration of the bat, the uh, point of impact where the ball gets maximum speed, so which is it? They're all so close together. I'm thinking that the sweet spot is really a combination of three, a really sweet zone. A sweet zone? I'd say that's a sound hypothesis. Ah! They don't use them in the pros, but what about aluminum bats? They definitely hit the ball farther and faster. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. These bats are lighter, so they come through quicker. Greater bat speed is greater energy. The aluminum bats are also stiffer than wood bats, so less energy is giving up in the bending and vibrating of the bat. Uh, there's possible it's also a, a bigger sweet spot due to the difference in materials. Whatever the reason, the ball comes off the bat fast, really fast, which has led to aluminum bats being banned in some leagues. Ah. Oh, look out! Ow. Didn't like the sound of that. OK, so what do we learn? A bat has a center of gravity and a center of percussion. The center of gravity is where you can balance the bat. The center of percussion is the part where you can hit the bat, and another part of the bat won't move. When a bat hits the ball, it vibrates. The vibrations cause waves of energy. The waves are made from modes, which are made up of two nodes, where the waves cancel each other out. If you hit at the point of the node, you get very little vibration. And there's also another point on the bat where the ball gets its maximum speed because of the law of conservation of energy and momentum. The bat the bat's sweet spot is probably a combination of all three. All right. So that's it. I'd like to thank Dan Ugla of the Florida Marlins, the Delray Stallions baseball team, and uh, of course our students from the G-Star School of the Arts, Lalo, Ross, Jimmy, Amanda, and Lucille for helping us out today on ESPN Sports Figures, the sweetest sound. That, ah! Ooh, that didn't sound right. I gotta, gotta fix this thing. For over 10 years, ESPN has been proud to present the award-winning sports figures, and we want to thank all the athletes who have donated their time to help put your brain in the game. ESPN Sports Figures airs commercial-free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For lesson plans and more information, visit our website at sportsfigures.espn.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Sports Figures, put your brain in the game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company.